Well, I know you all been dying for me to build a fire nest, but I think today's the day. Oh yeah, you heard me right. Fire boxes on that end, we're gonna build a fire on this end. Uh, if you watched our uh, chicken 1.0 video, you saw me uh, do chicken over the hot coals directly in the fire box. Uh, it, the chicken came out good, uh, but there's a few other things I wanted to try. Maybe get a little bit more distance between the coals and the chicken. Uh, maybe get our temperatures up a little bit higher. And uh, we're gonna try it today, so stick around and I'll show you uh, the setup I've come up with to uh, keep some of the ash out of my pit. Alright, let's see if we can get enough light in this chamber here where we can see. Uh, first and foremost, I want to make sure I don't stop up that drain with ash. So I've got a cookie sheet that I've loosely wrapped in foil just to kind of catch the ashes. Don't know if it'll work or not, but I think it will. Get over here in the middle. It'll help some. And then we're going to need some sort of a grate. So if you look down here at the tuning plates, way back there you can see there's a piece of angle that the tuning plates rest on. Got one in the back, you got one here in the front. Well, those continue all the way over into the vertical. Come on, just light. There we go. So that continues all the way over here on both sides. So I'm going to lay a grate down on that and then we'll build our charcoal on top of that. All right, I'm going to put this piece of grate right on that track that holds up our tuning plate. Fits just perfect. Now I've got a pan I'm going to put on top of this for the charcoal and hopefully this will keep the charcoal up far, and it'll be down here far enough from the chicken and then if any ash falls through then we'll catch it in that cookie sheet. Alright so if you remember last time we used this little uh, vegetable griller pan to uh, put our charcoal in. It, it worked pretty good. Uh, I couldn't get the fire hot enough to, uh, to suit me. So we're going to go with something a little bit deeper and uh, a little bit wider and see if we can get our temperatures up to where we want them. And we're also going to use lump this time instead of the briquettes. Uh, I went and found a different vegetable basket. This thing here, it's a lot deeper than the other one. So I think we can get enough coals in there to get our chicken done without having to constantly stay on top of it every 15-20 minutes. So we're going to try this, see how it works. Let's go get our charcoal. All right, we'll give that a few minutes to catch. Uh, let me go inside and get my chickens. All right, looks like our coals are getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and dump these in. Since we're using a lump, it's gonna burn down pretty quick. So while that settles down, I've got some cherry wood. A little cherry here. Found some in the greenhouse, it's nice and dry. We're gonna let this burn down into coals to join the coals that we have going here. And it won't be long. It'll be time to put some chicken on this. Stick around. I'm gonna leave the door open, give it plenty of oxygen to get burnt down. I've got both 
stacks open wide open and I got the vent on the firebox wide open all right everyone let's get these chickens ready uh, on one of them I'm gonna use some salt lick chicken seasoning pick this up at my local grocery store and on the other one we're gonna use a little Jack Daniels chicken rub try them both out see how we like it today I'm gonna put a little olive oil on these for a binder plus I think it would drip down and maybe help with some of our uh, essence that we're wanting to get up in here and rub these down real good I think we'll put the uh, salt lick on this one it's not going to go real heavy because the last time we tried this the sugars in the rubs kind of burnt uh, it didn't hurt the taste but it didn't look that great so we're just going to put a light coating on this this dude over more olive oil I'm not going to tie the legs up, I'm not going to tie the wings up, we're just going to hang it up there we're going to hail marry it today and see what happens we've probably got an extra foot, foot and a half distance between the coals and the meat this time and let's see if that really makes that much of a difference there we go Come back with our Jack Daniels on this one This one looks like it's got a little more paprika in it. I don't want to overdo it. I'm afraid it'll come out too dark. Back off, Grumpus. Don't get too carried away. That's what you did last time. All right, so the sausage rods uh, inside the pit. Of course, they're designed to hang sausage and ribs and stuff. But they're spread a little bit far apart for what we're doing here. So I'm going to try to really put these hooks as wide as I can because what it's going to try to do is pull the rods in together so I'm going to come way out here hopefully still catch that rib cage a little bit so I don't have to worry about things falling off Same thing on this. I'm just just catching it. See, I put that one in backwards. There we go. There we go. Hopefully. Had to hang without any issues. All right, let's go check our fire. Well, it looks like our coals died down pretty good, and that is hot. So we'll have to come back here in a little bit. We'll add just a little bit more lump as we go along. Maybe a piece of wood if we feel like we want it. But the main thing is we want to cook on the coals and not over smoke. Smoke won't hurt it, 
we're not trying to smoke this, we're trying to roast it and let those drippings come down into those coals. All right, let's see if we can get these chickens home. I know that rod's gonna be hot and I didn't put no gloves on. But let's see how it's pulling the, the rods in. We are trying to force it to do something it wouldn't normally do on its own. back far enough we don't have to worry about sliding off. Make sure we're right over the coals. Might want to pull this in just a little bit. Don't want them touching but they could be close. There we go. Alright folks it's been about 20 minutes since we hung that chicken. I've closed the inlet vent the damper down to about an inch open. That has given me uh, there's both stacks open. Got a little smoke, that's good. Now, don't, now bear in mind we're not offset cooking here so we're not worried about a blue flame. Uh, a little bit of smoke on that meat's good. We're, we're roasting over open fire right now. So don't confuse that smoke with the blue smoke we always try to get when we're doing offset. So let's see where we're at. We should have settled down. Yeah, we're right at 3.05. It's held that for about the last 10 minutes. I did put a couple more pieces of cherry, small cherry, just to kind of keep things going. Here's our chicken. Nothing on fire yet. So we're just going to let this keep going and I will check it again in about 45 minutes uh, to an hour. Uh, I need to close this door because I'm looking and you know what that means. Well the chicken's been hung two hours and 20 minutes so I think it's time we checked and see if we're getting close to being done. Uh, we're still holding a decent amount of smoke. And we've been dancing between 250 and 310 most of the afternoon. I've been feeding my coal bed with uh, little pieces of cherry, uh, making sure they ignite real good. Uh, this one's smoldering a little bit, but for the most part we've had flame and pretty clean smoke. But you look at the chicken. Chicken's looking really good. Now something I need to make a mental note of next time is if I'd have hung these breast side out then there's a good chance I wouldn't have to take them down just to temp them. But as it is, uh, let's just unhang them and lay them on a cookie sheet and see what, our, what temperature our breasts are at. I'm pretty sure the legs are done. I see the skin pulling. Uh, I haven't basted these or and I haven't spritzed them. So I want to try to get that skin as crispy as possible. So let's get them pulled and uh, let's see what they look like. All right, let's see where we're at. Try this thigh right here. 197, we're way done. 190, let's try the breast. 188. Hey, we're just about perfect here. 187. I think this other one's probably the same way. 180. That breast. 178. Yeah, these are done. Let's uh, sauce them up. Put them back up. Let them hang for maybe 15 minutes. Let that sauce tack up. And uh, we'll be ready to try these babies out.
All right, so today we're going to use a little Head Country Alpha Habanero. Uh, I've not used this before, but uh, everybody I've watched that used it says it's really good. So, uh, wife don't like things hot, but she's on a diet, so she can peel that skin off and put it on my plate. All right, let's get this put back on. There we go. I think I'll put a little bit more on those. that drip down and let that sugar kind of burn on them embers a little bit. You better bring a little extra taste up here on it. Oh, I gotta tell you, it sure smells good dripping on those coals. There it is. Let's get that about 15-20 uh, minutes. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Those look beautiful. Wow. Let's get them pulled, cut one of them open, see how she looks. All right, let's see what this is all about. Got a broken leg right here. Let's just go ahead and get it off there. Wow, look at that. So we cut this wing off. Get it out of the way anyway. I'll check this breast out. Let's get this hook out of here. Look at that. Can you see that? Well, I got to tell you, this time did a lot better than the last time. I mean, that's that's almost wet. Try a little piece of that. Oh, yeah. That'll work every time. Try a little piece of this dark meat. That's really good. That last chicken was good. This is really good. You can definitely tell the difference over the smoked chicken. It's got a whole different uh, flavor, greasy. Not a really a greasy, but you can tell it's a. It's like a grease smoke. It tastes very, very good. The uh, apple habanero, that's good stuff. Everybody was right. So uh, I need to take this in, let the family eat. Well, I'm so glad y'all encouraged me to try this. Uh, I was a little apprehensive about building the fire in the wrong end of the smoker, but uh, I was mainly concerned, I guess I, guess I was concerned with having just an ashy mess to clean up, and that didn't happen. 
A uh, small part of me was concerned about uh, maybe having a grease fire. I didn't want to have to deal with that. That didn't happen. What did happen was the chicken come out excellent. Just the right distance from the, from the coals. Uh, it was easy to keep the coals going all day. I just steadily put on little chunks of cherry. Just enough to uh, keep enough flame to keep the smoke down. And, uh, but enough to keep the coal beds fed. So total time on this was about uh, two hours and about 45 minutes, I think, when I finally pulled it. So uh, if I had to do it again, I'd probably pull it maybe a half hour sooner. But all in all, it's been a great cook. Appreciate y'all's comments. Uh, I read every single one of them. So if you got any ideas, toss them out there. We'll try it out. Uh, being the Lone Star Grills, we'll be your guinea pig. So at this point, I don't need a pit barrel smoker. I don't need a Weber Smoky Mountain. I sure don't need an ugly drum smoker. So far, everything I've loaded at the Lone Star Grill, it, it's come through for me. So keep my footprint small. I got a small yard, and we'll keep trying to push this thing to the limits until it hollers on. Hey, if you like what we've done, hit that like button. If you hadn't subscribed yet, why not? We'd sure appreciate it if you wanted to do that. So thanks for tuning in to Grumpus on Fire. I'm Grumpus. We'll see you next time.